this is my Dorite Anopsis Sogo Vivian, and oh boy, did I do a number on her, but I'm going to update you on the progress. You can see she's still around. She is, well, she lost two leaves since the last time that we saw her. I've got her in lava rock. I've got this little microfiber that I'm keeping damp because there's a single root going down into the lava rock there. That's the only sustenance she's got. I'm going to try and carefully show you through the grating whoop, of the orchid top, I have another root tip growing. Right out of the gate, as you can probably maybe hear on the mic, I'm trying to protect it. I thought it best to start with her because while the intro starts, would you mind giving this video already a like because Sogo Vivian is also growing another leaf. So far, the recovery is looking promising. And just for her, that warrants a like, no? In my opinion, And this is my Walter. <laughs> Oops, but look at how many roots are growing now. Yes, another number was done on this orchid. I misjudged the timing of getting roots in the pot during a time of year when the temperatures weren't exactly perfect for Phalaenopsis and Leca and self-watering. So I destroyed the root system, set the orchid majorly back. But Walter is back fighting. Lots and lots of new roots going into the pot. And I chose to do that with bark. Seeing as we are heading into winter again and the recovering orchid should not have to deal with evaporative cooling during a time of year when it's recovering. Don't want to lose this one. The progress is very, very promising. So I am going to run back inside, put him away, protect him a little bit from the elements because clearly out here the wind is extremely dry and I would like to keep humidity around the base. That's why my sphagnum moss is wet. So he'll go back in. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so very much. My video is not haphazard, I promise you. I just want to get past the most desperate candidates and update you on those without having them exposed to the great outdoors for too long. I'll be right back. The next orchid that needs to go back inside very, very quickly is my insolence that it was a gift from my daughter. Came with a terminal spike that I've been trying to rescue ever since. And I've had some great advice from a lot of you. And look, I've got a little cakey growing here with some roots. Oh, desperate times at the moment. It seems that the terminal spike is holding on to a lot of energy and we need that for those little roots to progress and keep the little cakey looking still nice and shiny. <laughs> but what I saw when I brought her outside was that something is also trying to work its way out of the apex there. So yeah, my first little insolence, probably a successful rescue attempt, don't know. I've got her where there's a lot of light and I'm making sure that I keep the plastic around her again because of humidity. You can see how windy it is. I'm getting blown away. So that is why I'm going through the ones that really can't deal with these conditions first. <laughs> I'm going to take her inside as well. <laughs> Just one more. I'm not trying to rush things here, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. I can relax a little bit now because the weakest of the lot are now back indoors, a little bit more protected if it's your first time here. Yes, I'm filming outdoors, but these Phalaenopsis live indoors all the time and all the wind. I don't want any root tip abrasions if you see what I mean. So this Phalaenopsis here, well, she didn't like Lekka and self-watering and she was so happy in lava rock many, many years ago. She is now back in lava rock. And while she is still waiting to grow proper structures, I can assure you she is not waiting to put roots down. Things are looking so, so good. I think she's recognizing and understanding that I got the hint and she is doing her part to at least forgive me and give me another chance. So Alexandra, I'm very pleased, is doing quite well. We are not always absorbing anything at the moment. Basically, I flush the pot just to make sure that the roots do hydrate at some stage, but there is nothing in the reservoir for the time being because, yeah, we're heading into cooler temperatures. I have to be a little bit more careful and let the roots get a little bit longer before the fertilizing regime starts in earnest. 
By the way, if it is your first time here, thank you for being here. And if you are a repeat offender on this channel, it's always so nice that you are here. I appreciate the support so much. If it is your first time, I would really appreciate the added support if you would subscribe to the channel. Here we are with my No ID Aurora 4.0 because these are the highly scented orchids that I love so much and I have three of them. The first one didn't make it so they go by 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0 <laughs> even though I only have three. But look at her. She came in that sphagnum moss but she had a double whammy. She also had the little basket of death as they say. So as soon as I saw a root tip going active I said yep that's that means the rest of them will do the same. And while she's not quite rooted in, look at her rock and roll with her first leaf. So I've kept the old spikes on just in case one day I may need to support her. But she's looking fantastic and I'm looking forward to letting her bloom out at some point again to have that gorgeous fragrance. It is indescribably delicious, intense and so welcome. Phalaenopsis with their long bloom duration allows the experience for that fragrance to be around for a very long time as well. I can't get enough of these little scented mini fells, <laughs> and I'm so happy she's doing so well. And here we have Insolence 2.0. <laughs> Not because I was thinking that the other one wouldn't make it, no. <laughs> of course, because I thought the other one wasn't going to make it. So when I saw a second variety in the garden center, it was so kind of Michelle Fucarino to actually send me something via PayPal so that I could go and get her. She was not exactly the epitome of beauty when I got her, but she had two things going for her. She didn't have a terminal spike and she had a root tip growing out of the base. So I thought, yeah, I can work with this and look at what she's done. She is busy with the roots in the pot. She is also hydrating beautifully and we have some beautiful leaves coming out it's just wonderful. So it's possible that I'm going to end up with two insolences. Of course, that's a made up name. It's my daughter's favorite perfume. To my understanding, she is a no ID. But until that little keiki actually blooms for us, and I hope it will one day because that will be cartwheels around the patio day, at least insolence will carry that responsibility. Maybe not if she tries to push a spike this time around. I might just say, uh, no, not yet, young lady. But look at this. I mean, how? Mm, so happy. So, Michelle Fucarino, look. Everything is absolutely the way it is supposed to be with insolence. Thank you once again for making this possible. Behold! <laughs> While we're on the subject of gifts. Ooh la la. Look at this. This is Phalaenopsis Romeo's Nube, not an official ID. This was given to me by a gentleman called Romeo, who also sent me something into my PayPal, which made it possible that this 2.0 would replace my original one, which went under a transition that I always do, and to me is a guaranteed safe transition for any Phalaenopsis into Lekka. And that orchid started to grow so well, and then promptly collapsed on me. To this day, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But look at 2.0, rocking and rolling, rooting and rolling. Can you see all of that going on in there? Look at this orchid just take off. Very, very pleased to update you, Romeo, on the progress and the well-being of Romeo's Nube. Super, super pleased. If she decides to throw a spike, I probably won't let her bloom either. Even though I would love to see those big white blooms again, she is a big lipped white, solid white orchid. Just gorgeous. Anyway, we shall wait and see, but so far, so good. But wait, there is one more. She is not a 2023 candidate. She is a 2022 candidate, but I cannot do an update without ending on Sopresa. She was a dumpster orchid. I found her roasting in the sun in August of 2022. And look at Madam. 
uh, not very shy, is she? <laughs> Isn't this amazing? Yeah, she still has her ugly duckling features, which I do also enjoy. It reminds me of my orchids in Kenya. They weren't pretty to look at, but oh, they had my heart. I love them all. But look at this one. Look at the roots. I don't mind these aerial roots because she, of course, has been in the collection now for the past 14 months anyway. She is well rooted in. This is her first full season in Lekka and self-watering. And now we're heading into the winter together. <laughs> and Madam, just look. She's already working on a spike. So I call her Suppressa, but she comes with a name and it is Phalaenopsis Pulsation. Just cannot, cannot ignore these root tips and the spike. <laughs> super, super pleased with her. And I just wanted to show you how she is doing. I hope the owner never comes knocking at my door, having seen that I walked off with her to ask if they can have their orchid back. <laughs> because I would have a problem. <laughs> Find us keepers, right? Anyway, this is my update on the Phalaenopsis that were a big project for 2023, how they fared since those videos aired, and letting you know that there are quite a few successes, even though we're dodging a little bit on 100% success, but the signs are positive. So I will leave you with that after I have thanked you well, for watching and expressed my appreciation for your support here. <laughs> We're about to get blown away. I don't want this leaf to snap, but I also want to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition. As always though, please, that you stay safe. <laughs> Isn't this insanity? <laughs> Love it. <laughs>